All right, let's test the convergence of this alternating series. So the first thing I would do is test for absolute convergence. If I find that, then it also proves the convergence of the ordinary series. So let's go for that. To test for absolute convergence, we're just looking at the absolute values of all the terms in this series. And that just basically disappears the negative one to the n part. Now glancing at this thing for a moment, I'm pretty sure it diverges because as n becomes large, this becomes approximately n over n squared, which is 1 over n. I think we're going to have a successful limit comparison to the harmonic series, which is divergent. So we're going to limit compare to the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n. So I take the ratio of the terms. There's the terms in the series under investigation. And then I'm going to divide by 1 over n, which is the same as multiplying by n over 1. And I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. Now, if this settles down to some finite number, then we'll conclude that both of these series diverge. Again, we knew in advance that the harmonic series diverges. Cancel one of those n's. I can just go ahead and divide both those terms by n. And I get 1 minus 1 over n. 1 over n unambiguously goes to 0 and I get 1 out of this limit. So both of these diverge. All right, so our series of absolute values does not converge. Now I can apply the alternating series test to the actual series that we started with. And to remind you of how that works, I need to show that the next term is less than the previous term, and I need to show that the limit of the terms is 0, where those ANs stand for just the positive part of this, not the part that's controlling the alternating of the signs. Proving part one is usually quite difficult. So if, I'm, if I just substitute in an n plus one, what I'm trying to show is that n plus one minus one, this is the n plus first term over n plus one quantity squared. I'm trying to show, I'm hoping, I'm gonna put a question mark here, that that's less than n minus one over n squared. And it's not really clear what's going on because the numerator and the denominator are both bigger on the left-hand side. So I don't know if it's actually smaller than the thing on the right-hand side. So what we do in practice is compare to the continuous function that generates these terms at the integers. In other words, a function of the real numbers. And then what I do is I hope to show the derivative of this thing is negative. If so, it's a decreasing function. And as I plug in larger and larger integers into it, I'm going to get smaller and smaller terms. And we'll satisfy our first condition. So let's take the derivative. Derivative of the top is just 1 denominator left alone minus numerator left alone derivative of the denominator divided by denominator squared and distributing in the second part of the numerator I have negative 2x squared and so my numerator is negative x squared plus 2x over x to the fourth again our goal here is to show that this thing is negative um, it doesn't really matter if it's positive for a little bit, as long as it eventually, when we cross some value of n, it stays negative forever, because it's the long-run behavior that matters for questions of convergence. So I'm hoping to show that negative x squared plus 2x is a negative thing. And I'm sure that it is once I get to a large enough value of x, because x squared is growing so much faster. But let's go over here and look at a little side note. And we'll try to actually prove it and we'll try to nail down the number n that we have to exceed for this to stay true from then on. Again, what I'm hoping for is to show negative x squared plus 2x is less than 0. And I want to get some kind of condition on x for when this is true. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. And I get x squared minus 2x is greater than 0. And I'm going to factor out an x. And I ask myself, when is this true? And it's true if both of these terms are negative, which I'm not even interested in because we're talking about sequences and the ends are all positive, or when both of these terms are positive. So what does it take to make them both positive? X would have to be bigger than 2. So provided X is bigger than 2, this derivative is going to be less than 0. All right, so this is a decreasing function as long as we're past 2. And that's totally fine for issues of convergence to have exceptions to the rule early in the sequence, as long as it then settles down for the long run. So we showed the derivative is eventually negative, and it stays that way. And that verifies that an plus 1 is less than or equal to an. 
Then we investigate the second condition, the limit, and that should be the easy part. I'm just going to divide each of those terms by n squared. That gives me a 1 over n minus a 1 over n squared. And both of those unambiguously go to 0. So we satisfied the second condition. All right, so to summarize what's happened here, we looked at the series of absolute values and found that it diverged. And then we looked at the actual alternating series and found that it converged. So this one is conditionally convergent.